Hello, my name is Jiang Ni. I'm from KAIST. Today, I talk about ProSys, a high-speed network flow capture and retrieval system. Network monitoring performs an essential function in network management, such as network provisioning and attack forensics. Uh, for effective network provisioning, we need to have accurate statistics of network traffic. We also need deep flow inspection to check if important data is leaking and sometimes to reconstruct the crime. Besides, real-time network monitoring plays a uh, critical role in software-defined networking. Typically, a network monitoring sy uh, system captures and dumps the packets to this for later analysis. However, for the flow-level network monitoring and analysis, we need to reconstruct flows from packets. TCP dump and Wireshark's are well-known uh, packet capture and analysis tools. They provide detailed packet analysis, but they exhibit poor performance in a high-speed network. And to disk is a multi-gigabit packet recorder with support for indexing for fast retrieval. This packet-based system captures arriving packets and dumps them to hard disk in the order of arrival. Unfortunately, it is very inefficient to retrieve all packets in a flow since they need to read every packet uh, sorry, from a disk to see if uh, the packet belongs to the flow. Indexing helps this situation a little bit, but it's still very slow because it requires lots of disk accesses since the packets are spread across the disk. To improve inefficient per packet uh, retrieval, we design uh, a flow-based capture system. It writes and reads the packets in the same flow at one location. It classifies the packet according to the flow information and writes the packets in the uh, same flow at the contiguous disk space. It makes an index for each flow rather than each packet, and so the amount of index is much smaller than that of per packet index. For retrieval, the flow in the index tells where the flow uh, stores the, in the disk. Uh, this allows reading the entire packets in the flow at one disk C. In addition, we can think about real-time flow contents reassembly. Uh, it restores flow contents from packet payload and writes the reassembled content to disk instead of packet. By doing this, we can see the contents without uh, extra reassembly process. Uh, this allows us to improve storage efficiency by deduplicating the flow contents. So in this talk, we argued that flow-level monitoring is much more beneficial than packet level monitoring, and we need a flow-based capture and retrieval system for high-speed network. However, there are many ch technical challenges in developing a flow-based capture system. First, we need to reconstruct flows in real time. We may need to handle a large number of concurrent flows, which cause large processing and memory overhead. However, we should avoid packet drops as much as possible for accurate monitoring. Second, we need an efficient design for flow rail disk access and indexing. We target uh, for multi 10 gigabit environment, which is very challenging since poor system performance will produce a large number of packet drops. Finally, in a high speed network, even a single 10 gigabit link can deliver more than 100 terabytes of data in a single day. So what this means is that the low, uh, the flow retrieval can take many, many hours if we don't use indexing. Moreover, uh, small street space could uh, significantly limit the monitoring period. In this work, we have developed process a high-speed flow capture and retrieval system, which benefits from pipeline parallel processing architecture. For past flow retrieval, process minimize disk accesses by using a two-stage flow-level indexing structure. To achieve high throughput without any packet drop, it also limits the processing uh, latencies. Finally, process implements flow content deduplication that removes redundancy in hard disk and improves the storage efficiency. As a result, process enjoys uh, 36 gigabps of peak performance for flow capture. We confirm that process uh, finishes a flow retrieval about five times faster than a state-of-the-art packet retrieval system. In addition, uh, our flow contents deduplication saves 34.5% of storage space in the test with real LT trace of a large ISP in South Korea. 
In the following slides, I'll talk about our contributions in more detail. Uh, for the high-speed performance and scalability, we designed a parallel processing architecture. Process consists of multiple engines, uh, which, uh, uh, while each engine is independent of each other. A user can configure the number of engines uh, easily according to the hardware specification. Process uses package shaders network I.O. library called PSIO. It supports parallel packet capture by multiple CPU cores. It uses symmetric RSS hashing to deliver the packets in the same flow to the uh, same CPU core. Each engine on each CPU core reads the packet in the RX queue of PSIO. It looks up the flow table to find relevant flows for each packet and update the flow. It reassembles the flow contents and calculates the Shawn hash of the flow contents for deduplication. When a flow is finished, the engine thread creates a uh, an indexing for, uh, index for the flow and copies the flow data to a buffer to write, the, uh, write it to the disk. Process writes many flows to multiple hard disks simultaneously to achieve high disk uh, writing throughput. Each engine of process is pipeline to minimize the con contention by co competing operations. Uh, engine, an engine consists of uh, three types of threads. The first one is engine thread, which process the most of the operations of an engine. A writing thread writes buffer flow data to its own hard disk. An engine thread can have multiple writing threads depending, uh, depending on the configuration, considering the total number of hard disks. An engine also has indexing threads that performs index sorting, flow retriever, and index writing to solid state drive. I'll talk about the details of the operations later. We, ad we adopt this pipeline architecture to avoid the con contention by I.O. operations. Co-locating packet reading and disk I.O. on the same uh, thread could significantly delay each other. So we separate these operations to the different threads. We also spread other uh, CPU intensive operations such as shower hashing, index sorting, and flow retriever. To avoid the uh, thread scheduling issue, scheduling issue, we allocate different CPU cores to the engine thread and the indexing threads. We design a two-stage flow-level indexing architecture for fast retriever. Process stores many flows in a file which has a pixel size like one gigabyte. It creates a set of uh, indexes for each file. It creates uh, the first stage is the file indexing that uh, consists of two timestamps and four volume filters for IP addresses and port numbers. The, um, the first timestamp is the start time of the earliest flow in the file, and the other timestamp is the end time of the la uh, latest flow in the file. The second stage is flow indexing that has four sorted arrays for IP addresses and port numbers. Uh, let me explain how to create these indexes and how to uh, search a specific flow with, this, uh, with an example. For each flow, we have flow metadata. Each flow metadata has source and destination IP addresses and port numbers, and start, start and end time, and disk location and length of the flow data in hard disk. For the flow metadata, we have four sorted arrays for IP addresses and port numbers. For example, let's see a sorted array for source IP addresses. This array includes all source IP addresses of the flows in the file, and uh, in the file, and is sorted in the ascending order. Each uh, slot has a source IP addresses and a pointer to the corresponding flow data. And the bits in the Bloom filter are marked according to the source IP addresses of the flows in the file. Then let's see how to use these indexes to retrieve all uh, flow. Here is an example flow retriever query uh, with a specific time range and a source IP address. A user can give a single tone or a range of values, and process can handle both of them efficiently. In the first stage, process filters the uh, file by timestamps and Bloom filters to see whether the target flows reside in this file. Besides, uh, since the timestamp and the Bloom filters are in the memory, process finishes this step very quickly. In the next stage, it reads the sorted arrays and flow metadata on the 
file from an SSD and launch binary search and uh, on the search array to find the uh, wanted flow. After that, it access the flow metadata using the po uh, pointer in the search array. Then it reads the flow data from a hard disk using the disk location and length in the flow metadata. By doing this, we try to minimize the number of disk accesses and improve the performance. To achieve high performance without packet drop, we need to remove unpredictable processing delay. If reading packet from NIC is delayed too much, then the buffer in the NIC could become full, so there is no more space to buffer arriving packets temporarily. This causes sudden packet drop. This unpredictable delay can be caused by several issues. The first one is thread scheduling. To avoid the random delay from scheduling, we pin each thread to a CPU core. It also improves CPU cache utilization. The second one is unpredictable disk I/O delay. We avoid latencies from file system cache by using direct I/O with a large buffer and pre-allocating disk blocks for sequential disk access. The third one is runtime dynamic memory management overhead. The, we overcome this problem by pre-allocating pre memory chunks at initialization. In addition, our careful implementation helps minimize uh, latency fluctuation and we achieve high zero drop performance. The last contribution is uh, flow content deduplication to improve the storage efficiency. I'll describe how flows buffers and write TCP flows for deduplication. Let's think that the blue packets are upstream request packets and the purple packets are the downstream response packets. Uh, when the packet arrives, Flowsys parses each packet into packet header and payload. It then buffers packet headers in the order of arrival for later for packet analysis. It reassembles the upstream and downstream contents according to uh, TCP sequence numbers. During that, it calculates the shower hash value for each contents. At the end of the flow, it writes the flow to a hard disk like this. Uh, it writes the packet headers and the upstream and downstream contents are written in the next. In front of the flow data, there is a metadata that points each part of uh, the flow data. Then let's think about another flow that requests the same contents as the response. The flow contents are reassembled in the same way. And at the end of flow, process checks the shower hash value and it realizes that downstream contents are duplicated. First, it writes only the packet headers and upstream contents. The metadata points the previous contents on another flow as its downstream contents. In this way, we can remove uh, duplicated contents data from hard disk. From now on, we'll, talk, uh, we'll evaluate the performance of process. First, I'll present how fast process is for flow capture and retrieval. After that, I'll talk about the storage saving by our flow content uh, deduplication. We build flushes on a server machine with 16 CPU cores, 4 10G NIC ports, 128 gigabytes of main memory, uh, 24 3 terabytes of hard disk, and two SSDs. We use two types of workloads for evaluation. For, uh, the first one is synthetic workload. It is 40 gigabit pass of random packets having specific size. The other one is real LT backhaul trace from a large ISP in South Korea. We replay the traffic for the evaluation. This graph shows the performance of packet capture and disk dumping of flushes. We compare the performance with those of uh, TCP dump and N2Disk 10G. N2Disk 10G is a high-speed version of N2Disk for multiple 10 gigabit pass of network traffic recording. For TCP dump, we test both original and the one with uh, network, NetMap support. NetMap is a well-known high-speed network I/O library. We check the performance with several input traffic with different packet size. Process and N2Disk 10G shows high performance, which is close to the hardware limit. With 24 hard disks, we can achieve about 36 gigabps of sequential disk writing throughput at maximum. However, TCP dump shows poor performance, even if it uses NetMap, because TCP dump itself is not optimized for the multi-core environment. We also check the peak and zero drop performance of process and N2Disk 10G with real LT trace replay. For fair comparison, 
return of the duplication at re uh, that requires heavy shower hashing. We check the performance of n 2 disk tangent with and without indexing. For the zero dollar performance, we measure and the maximum performance that each program can process traffic with, at, without uh, any packet drop by varying the uh, replay speed. The peak performance of both process and n 2 disk tangent are almost equal to the hardware limit. However, the peak zero dollar performance of process is near 30 Gbps, while n 2 disk tangent shows about 20 Gbps. We do not know the exact reason of why n 2 disk tangent shows a poor performance uh, since we, do, uh, we don't have the source code. But it's the best performance with several tests with different configurations. Anyway, we think that our optimization that removes unpredictable latency, uh, latency really helps in achieving high zero drop performance. Next, I'd like to compare the flow retrieval uh, times. We dump our real trace and search for the flows by querying 10 randomly selected source IP addresses. We compare the elapsed times with n 2 tangent packet level indexing and retrieval. As you can see, process achieves the flow uh, uh, retrieves the flows about two to the five times faster than n 2 disk tangent. Moreover, the difference becomes larger as the number of flows in the retrieval result increases. Uh, this is because as the number of flows increases, n 2 disk tangent suffers from much higher number of disk accesses. In contrast, uh, process significantly benefits from flow level indexing. Finally, we check the storage saving by our flow content deduplication. We replay our real tra uh, trace and check the amount of storage saving. We also measure the memory requirements to maintain a lookup table holding the previous contents in the disks. We check the deduplication rate that is calculated by the storage saving over the total volume. For example, if we need 80 gigabytes of storage space to write 100 gigabytes of data, then the deduplication rate is 20%. We check the deduplication rate with various lookup table size. As you can see, the deduplication rate increases as the lookup table size gets larger. However, we confirm that the table size larger than 256 megabytes does not increase the deduplication rate since it is reaches the maximum deduplication rate of the original traffic. Anyway, it is important to see that we can save a large portion of storage space even with a relatively small amount of memory consumption. In our case, we save 34.5% of storage space with only 256 megabytes of memory. Because of heavy shower hashing for the deduplication, the zero drop performance is now reduced to 15 gigabps, but it's still high enough to cover a single 10 gigabps link uh, which will be very helpful for increasing the monitoring period. Let me summarize my presentation. We are motivated by the actual needs and benefits of flow monitoring system, and we develop FlowSys, a highly scalable flow capture, indexing, and retrieval system. It has a pipeline federal processing architecture and a two-stage flow-level indexing for fast flow retrieval. It also supports uh, flow content deduplication. As a result, we achieved about 36 and 30 gigabps of peak and zero drop performance, respectively. We confirmed that our flow retrieval is much efficient than packet retrieval. Finally, our flow content deduplication can save 34.5% of storage space only with 256 megabytes of additional memory consumption. Thank you very much. Is there any question? I had a question about your deduplication. Um, could you talk about the traffic mix? Was that on your live trace or your um, So we captured the traffic from uh, the backhaul link of, on ISP in South Korea, and we replay them. Um, so it would, my intuition is that there's quite a few types of traffic that deduplication is a no, is, is no win for, things like SSL um, uh -huh. and video. And do, do you have a sense of like what the traffic mix was that led to what looks like a relatively... Actually, watching the inside of the traffic itself is illegal, so I didn't check it uh, in depth, deeps, uh, in depth, depth but 
Uh, most of the traffic was the HTTP traffic, and it was about 75%. And I didn't mention about HTTP here, but we also deduplicate. Uh, we also parse the HTTP header and response bodies, and we learn the, uh, we calculate the Shawn uh, value for the response bodies. So, so we check uh, the readiness in HTTP responses, and then. If there is a duplicated HTTP response, then we uh, didn't uh, write the duplicated one. It seems like as the web is moving towards SSL everywhere, this mm -hmm. becomes uh, sort of hard. If uh, it's encrypted, then the DDoS will not work well. But um, uh, but encrypting everything is, I think, uh, not that critical because was, people want to make everything encrypted, but uh, I think it, there are, uh, it, it'll take quite a long time, I think. And, uh, but actually, uh, if uh, every traffic is encrypted, then the DDO will not, uh, I think, it's a bit hard to uh, save a large portion of uh, street space. All right, thank you. Hi, I'm the author of uh, N2Disk. Uh, I would like to comment yeah. some of your <laughs> statements. Yeah, I like this pro pro program. <laughs> okay, first of all, thanks for using our software. It is nice to see that uh, it has inspired some of your work. Uh, talking about the performance, okay, yeah. I, I see that there are two conceptual differences between what I've done and what you have done. The, the, so? yeah, the, the main issue with N2Disk is that uh, we cannot shuffle packet at all. So what people want, they want to see an image of what is passing on the network. Mm. Shuffling packets or dividing them in flows is prohibited because, you know, at the end you will end up saving to disk something that is not the same as you have seen in the network. So if you look at this picture, you see that the throughput is 20G. The throughput is 20G because you have used four network interfaces and so you're trying to merge the traffic from those ports. Mm -hmm. And each core, because we have to respect the sequentiality of the packet, is not able to, to, to do this merging for more than 20 gigabit per second. So those data are actually good. So in order to do the same uh, as you have done, you have to run two instances, each doing 20G, similar to what you're doing, no shuffling packet per interfaces so that we have uh, coherent timestamps. And then during extraction, we reorder the packet. Mm -hmm. Another comment I want to make is that uh, your indexing is very smart. It's a very smart idea. But again, it goes against uh, our principle because we cannot shuffle packets. And also, also another thing I would like to comment is the following. Uh, when we write traffic at 10 gigabit, okay, uh, this is even more true if you're running at 40. So each file uh, per second is 1.25 gigabyte, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're saving 1.25 gigabyte per 10G interface to disk. In this second, the number of flows that you have is very huge, okay? Mm -hmm. So I if I've read your paper, you've said that the, the index is 0.25% of your file, so it looks to me that you have run experiments with a very small number of flows, that this does not happen in reality, especially if you have this type of traffic. So my conclusion is the following. Your work is definitely a step ahead, but I think you should position it in a way differently. So not just look at those numbers, because there is a justification for those numbers. Actually, I would be surprised if we will do 40G, because then there is something different. This, this is all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, Daniel Waddington from Samsung. Um, I, I, you use the packet shared uh, uh, network stack. Yeah. And you know their results. I just briefly looked at it. Sort of indicate that, irrespective of packet size, you sort of get this great throughput. Did you actually do some experiments to um, look at your throughput for small packets? Uh, pardon. Uh, so, did you do some experiments to vary the uh, packet sizes uh, and then see the throughput of the system? Yeah, actually, that is the graph. Uh, so, I tested uh, the, I checked the performance with various size of packets. So. From 64 to 150, uh, 14 bytes. Okay. Yeah, so it shows high performance with the small size of packets. Yeah, so it does change. Uh, does it? Um, okay, it's about the same. Okay, yeah. thank you. Let's take the speaker again.